Geometry proofs can be really difficult or they can be easy. The difference is whether or not you know these eight common properties that come up all the time. Reflexive property. Use this when the triangles have an angle or a side in common. Talking about this side right here, they have in common, but there's two separate triangles here. But this side is equal to itself. This isn't like an entire proof. This is how you will talk about the reflexive property when you have to use it in a proof. The statement you would make here, if this was your picture, is that segment AD is congruent to segment DA. And the reason is reflexive property. Vertical angles are congruent. These are vertical angles. They're across from each other. So you look for this when you have two lines intersecting. And how you would use this in a proof is the statement would be angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE. And the reason is that vertical angles are congruent. Definition of a midpoint. In this diagram, you're given that D is the midpoint of CB. Midpoints are handy because they tell you that two segments are congruent without telling you that two segments are congruent. And so that's how you can use them in your proof. D is a midpoint of CB. You have to say that first. That's given. And then segment CD is congruent to segment DB. And that's the definition of a midpoint. Definition of an angle bisector. Well, you have to be told there is an angle bisector, which we are right here. BC is bisecting angle ABD. And when you have an angle bisector, it means you have two congruent angles. In your proof, you have to start out with your given information. So BC bisects angle ABD. Then you can state that angle ABC right here is congruent to angle CBD right here. And that's the definition of an angle bisector. Right angles are congruent. Well, all right angles are congruent because the measure of an angle that's a right angle is 90 degrees. So you're going to look for this one whenever you're given right triangles or a square or a rectangle because all of those figures are going to have 90 degree angles in them. In a proof, just go ahead and make the statement that angle ABD is congruent to angle DEA because right angles are congruent. Definition of a perpendicular bisector. AD is a perpendicular bisector. You will need to be given that information, but when you are given that information, you have two congruent segments because they're sharing this side, and you have two right angles on either side of that bisector. And there's one of the triangles, and there's the other triangle. You're starting out with this big triangle with a bisector in the middle, but you're going to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. At least that's the question that you'd be asked when this pops up. So in the proof, now we're not doing the entire proof, we're just showing you how you would write about a perpendicular bisector. AD is congruent to DA, and that would be the reflexive property, and ADB is congruent to ADC right angles are congruent. Oh, hey, this is Tammy in the future. And I was looking at this video right before I was getting ready to publish it. And I realized I did not do a good job with this one. I never even used the definition of the perpendicular bisector in this like little proof sample. I did not talk about these two are also congruent, which was the whole point of using a perpendicular bisector. So I really just about have an entire triangle proof. So I might as well finish it out for you. This is true that AD is congruent congruent to DA, and then we got those angles congruent, but we also have BD is congruent to CD, and that is the definition of a perpendicular bisector. This little symbol here, this upside down T, is the symbol for perpendicular. So we have a, a side, this side, and then we have an angle, and then we have another side. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ADC, and the reason is side, angle, side, triangle congruence. All right, in this figure, we're told that segment HI is parallel to segment JK. This is the given, but I've also got these parallel markings here. 
So when you see parallel lines, you are allowed to use all of the things you've learned about what happens with angles and parallel lines and transversals. Alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. You're going to need to use that a lot. There's going to be two congruent angles because you have two triangles here. There's the transversal that's cutting this figure in half, and you're going to have an alternate interior angle here and an alternate interior angle here, and they are congruent. All right, we start with the given information that segment HI is congruent to segment JK, and that's given. Then we go into our congruence statements about these angles. HKJ is congruent to angle KHI, and the reason is that they are alternate interior angles, so alternate interior angles are congruent. And in this diagram, we are given that line T bisects segment AE. We don't know if it does BD. If it doesn't tell you, you can't assume it, but we do know it's bisecting AE. So this is the definition of a segment bisector. We're going to use that in a proof. And the reason we want to use it is because if you have a segment bisector, it's kind of like a midpoint. You're going to end up with two congruent segments there and there. In a proof, line T bisects AE. The reason is given. AC is congruent to EC, and that's the definition of bisector. Hey, if you got some value out of this, it would help me out a lot if you would like and subscribe so this channel can grow on YouTube. Thank you.